everybody. Welcome to the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be your guide for the day. Today we continue on in our series of cells or about cells with the topic of osmosis and diffusion. So like we always say, we want to start with the end in mind, which means we need our objectives to get going. Here's what they are. First one is to be able to relate random movement to osmosis and diffusion. The second is to predict predict, sorry, words are hard, predict the movement of water and solute across a membrane. So a couple of terms that you need to know in starting out with diffusion. Know that diffusion is a product of random movement. Now, when I talk about something diffusing, I mean that you have got some sort of, in our case, cell. It has a membrane around the outside. There is stuff on the outside of the cell. There is stuff on the inside of the cell. That stuff needs to be able to move across that cell membrane. So diffusion is the process of things moving across a membrane or spreading out in an area. Now, that is always going to happen as a result of random movement. The molecules don't think to themselves, hmm, I want to get over to that side of the membrane. They just are moving around randomly, and they happen to fall through a hole or a pore or something that lets them to the other side. So know that diffusion is not something they think about doing. It's just a result of them moving around ra randomly and then falling through a pore or a hole or something like that. Second term that you need to know is concentration gradient. This just means that when you have a membrane, if you've got a lot of solute on one side and very little on the other side, the difference in between those two concentrations is the gradient. You can think of it as being like a hill. The, the side that's got a lot of solute is the uphill side. The side that has got very little solute is the downhill side in between is a concentration gradient. Last term is the dynamic equilibrium. And what that means is that eventually, all things will come to equilibrium, which means they will balance out. And as far as our membrane is concerned, you'll have the same concentration of solute on both sides. But that doesn't mean things stop moving. It says dynamic equilibrium because molecules are continuing to move back and forth across that membrane. They're just doing it at an equal rate to where the concentration on both sides remains equal. So let me show you a couple pictures to illustrate what I was just talking about. Um, concentration gradient good way to see this is right here in this first picture. You can see that you've got a whole bunch of solute molecules right here, none over here, so our concentration gradient is right here. All of our solutes, which are these little yellow things, want to move in this direction. Now, random movement, you can see over here they show the molecules moving around, bouncing off of things. As those molecules move around randomly, some of them are going to find their way through the pore that lets them to the other side. So this kind of illustrates the random movement thing. And finally, you can see here we've got equilibrium. This is our dynamic equilibrium. Note that they're showing you that molecules are moving both ways across the membrane. So they haven't stopped moving, but we do have equal concentration of solute on both sides. So we've made it to balance, but things are still continuing to move back and forth. Uh, let's talk about osmosis for a second. I thought this was a funny picture, so you can share it with me. Um, osmosis is just the diffusion of water. So it's water moving from an area where there's a lot of water to an area where there is very little water. If you've ever put salt onto a slug and watched him shrivel up, that's, what ha that's what's happening. So kind of like that bottom picture shows, you've got all these little red molecules. The red molecules represent the salt. If there's a lot of salt outside of the cell. That means there's a lot of solute and very little solvent or very little water. All the blue represents water. So because there's a lot of water in here, but very little water out here, water wants to move from high to low. So it's going to move from inside the cell to outside the cell, and our poor little slug is going to shrivel up and die. A little bit more about osmosis. Things move from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential. And what I mean by high and low water potential is just saying that there's a lot of water or there is a little water. If an area has got high water potential, that means it's got a lot of water in it. If it's got low water potential, it's got a little water, uh, little water in it. And it moves into an area with a high solute concentration. So let me go ahead and draw you a little picture. I'm going to be fancy and try to use like three colors. So here's our membrane. And we're going to say that red represents salt. So we've got a whole bunch of salts over on this side of the membrane. 
and there might be one or two over here, but there's not very many. And we're going to use our green to represent water. We got a ton of water over here on this side. Now because everything wants to move from high to low, our water wants to move in this direction because there's very little water on that side of the membrane. So all these little green ones, they're going to want to go this way. But at the same time, our poor little red molecules, they want to move to where there's fewer of them. So our solute wants to go this direction. And this becomes a little chasing match. You could say that the red solute molecules are like the cool kids. The green water molecules, they're kind of like the nerdy kids. So the nerdy kids see all the cool kids over here and they want to run over and be with the cool kids. But as soon as all those nerdy kids start running over here, the cool kids, they all run over in the other direction. So in a situation like this, you're always going to have the water and the solute chasing each other back and forth until equilibrium is reached. But just remember, in general, Water is going to move from an area where there is more water to an area where there is less water. Now we're going to talk about tonicity, which is basically the idea of whether a cell will gain or lose water. And there's three types of solutions. I'm going to go through each one individually. But they are isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. And each one has a different effect on the cell. So kind of let's talk about those. So in a hypertonic solution, as we've always said, it's all about the words. Hyper, I want you to remember, means above or upper. Think of a hyper hopped up kindergartner who has had all kinds of sugar. If a cell is put in a hypertonic solution, a hypertonic solution means that there is a bunch of solutes on the outside of the cell. So because our hypertonic solution has got a lot of solute outside of the cell, all of our water that is inside the cell wants to leave because remember the water wants to go where the solute is. If the water leaves our cell that means that the cell is going to shrink up or shrivel in a plant cell. This is a situation called plasmolysis or the cell becomes plasmalized. It pulls away from the cell walls. Our second solution that you need to know is the opposite situation. It is a hypotonic solution. Now hypo means under or below. So in this case you have got a bunch of solute inside the cell. Not very much solute outside the cell. So this would be a situation kind of like being in fresh water where our cells have got stuff dissolved in them but the fresh water that you're in doesn't have that much stuff. So water wants to rush into the cell if it rushes into the cell, our poor cell, he can't handle it, and he explodes. In an animal cell, this is called lysis. Okay, lysis means to break. Now, in a plant cell that has a cell wall, that vacuole is going to absorb the water, and it's going to become turgid, which means that this vacuole pushes up against the sides of that uh, cell wall and causes the cell to swell, but it won't burst because it has a cell wall around it. Last solution that you need to know is an isotonic solution. Iso means same. So in an isotonic solution, the concentration of solute outside the cell is the same as the concentration of solute inside the cell. And water is going to move back and forth freely in equilibrium. It's not going to move in one specific direction. So our cell is going to stay normal. He's going to stay happy. If this is a plant cell, it is going to be known as flaccid, which means that it's kind of, excuse me, it's kind of limp a little bit. It's not turgid where the vacuole is pressed tight up against the wall but it's also not plasmalized where the cell wall has pulled away and the cell dies. So this is a situation, it's probably the normal situation for plants. Um, they might need to be watered but they're not in rough shape. Last thing to talk about today is osmoregulation. It sucks to live in water. So let's talk about why it sucks to live in water. A couple of points for you to know. Um, if you live in salt water, let's say you're a little paramecium living in salt water, there's a lot of salt outside your body, but not very much salt inside your body. So this means that the solution is hypertonic to you and water is going to want to rush out of your body into the surrounding ocean and cause you to shrivel up and die. So if you are an organism living in this sort of situation, you have to have mechanisms for pumping extra water into your body to keep yourself 
alive. Now flip that over to a freshwater situation. And if you are a freshwater organism like the paramecium you see in the picture there, you've got a lot of stuff dissolved in your body, but there's not very much outside your body. So this means that water is always trying to rush into you, which is going to cause you to explode. So you have to have a way to get rid of those extra water molecules that are coming in. If you remember in one of our past videos, we talked about vacuoles. Look at your little paramecium down there. He looks like he's got craters on him. Those craters are contractile vacuoles, and they're spe special pumps that are made just for pumping out the extra fresh water that flows into his body. So osmoregulation is just regulating the amount of water inside of an organism's body, and it's going to be different depending on whether you live in salt water or fresh water. So I hope that you have tracked with me today. I hope this little tutorial was beneficial to you. We'll look forward to seeing you again on the next Lab 207 webcast. Thank you.